assistant exercise science specialist and health coach at ironmedicinepa.com. Welcome you all to my part two of lipidology, interpreting the Quest Diagnostics Cardio IQ Advanced Lipid Fractionation Panel. So we're returning to our patient. Uh, we're going to start out here with the diagram of progression of arterial disease. Uh, we can see how the, the artery narrows. We get to what we never want to get to, which is a heart attack, blood clot formation. And this is just because the diameter of the artery narrows, and eventually, because of the surface, the rough surface of the artery, more plaque starts developing over time. Maybe a plaque ruptures, comes off, blocks the artery upstream, bam, you get a stroke or a heart attack. And uh, they're pointing out a few, a few of the things we've been talking about here, um, oxidized LDL, high uh, inflammatory markers, LPPLA2 activity. Um, so all of this contributes to heart disease and strokes. So two month follow up via telehealth, he got some blood work done elsewhere. He says he's gone away from the keto diet, he's taking the SEPA, and he says his labs have improved. Uh, his potassium is a little bit low, 3.4, and we talked about increase in potassium rich foods. His creatinine is 1.5, pretty much stable. His cholesterol had come down from 259, um, oh, so from, to 259 from 312, consistent with his dietary change away from keto. His triglycerides are down 109 from 144, consistent with starting the SEPA. And his direct LDL is 183, down from 224. His HDL is up 61 from 58. And his total billy room is still the same. And his fasting glucose was again 92. Although it's within the normal range, this is the high end of normal, especially for someone as fit and healthy as he is. Uh, the VA recommended again that he start a statin, and the patient wants to start one. So we will start with low dose resuvastatin, 10 milligrams, and see how he tolerates this. His ALKFOS is 64, AST is 16, and his ALT is 17. We will recheck his uh, LFTs again in two weeks after starting the statin. Uh, good. So here's the two-week LFT follow-up on the statin. So he did start it, and he was taking resuvastatin, 10 milligrams for two weeks. And his LFTs, uh, let's see, were, were pretty much stable. Or they were fine. He noticed the myalgia, so this is pretty common after starting a statin drug. You can get muscle pains from this. So what he did on this own is he started taking CoQ10, and he said that the side effects, the myalgias, they went away. He noticed better energy on B12 supplementation, and he started to add a little bit of carbs back to his diet and noticed slight more belly fat. However, his strength in the gym has e increased off the keto diet. However, he knows that he feels sluggish after eating a large carb meal. And I can attest to that. I know the, how that feels. You feel so tired after eating a lot of carbs. So this is his blood work follow-up, his blood pressure readings at home. Still a little bit elevated. He's um, increasing broccoli, salads, steaks. So he's keto-ish. He's still having cheese, coffee in the morning, avocado oil. He's reduced his bacon. And he's lifting three to four days a week in the gym. There's a recent huge shift in the American College of Cardiology. This is actually... It, happened while we were treating this patient is that college cardiology steps up their game and says that perhaps they've been wrong for the past 40 years and saturated fats are not linked to heart disease. They also suggest that focusing on the standard lipid panel is inadequate and small LDL size is more indicative of heart disease risk than just using the st standard LDL panel. I'm glad that they caught up, you know, as we talked about in the last lecture, the Europeans have been on board, a lot of studies have been published, the Swedes are looking at this, America has caught up finally, thank you. And they're saying that saturated fats don't cause heart disease, really cool. But in this case, in this patient, he might actually be risk for heart disease with his ketogenic diet. So I was saying despite what the ACC says here, and despite my agreement with uh, you know, that saturated fats don't cause heart disease in general, I think for this patient, he might be one of the cases where his ketogenic diet and that high fat, high saturated fat diet was actually causing some problems for him. And backing off on that and putting him on a statin is what he needed to be done. I got the Cardio IQ insulin resistance panel with score. This was normal for him, so kind of reassuring that he doesn't, he really doesn't have diabetes. We looked at this thoroughly. I've done this in other patients where their blood sugar was 
relatively uh, low normal or high normal, and maybe their A1C was borderline high, and their insulin resistance panel was astronomically high. And then we said, wow, we didn't have the diagnosis of diabetes before, but now we do have it. This patient does not have diabetes, which you could have just said by looking at him, but because of his really high risk factors of heart disease, I just wanted to be thorough on this. We looked at his cardio IQ lipid panel by comparison. So really cool, we can see what is happening to him on the resuvastatin, his ApoB lipoprotein. We can see in the past, it was um, more elevated. So time has progressed, he's dropped about 50 points on his ApoB lipoprotein B. Cholesterol dropped. His HDL increased, which is what we want. His lipoprotein A, um, that also decreased. I don't think we talked about that much, but it's another risk factor for cardiovascular disease in the modern area of lipid fractionation. What else? LDL particle number was improving as well, so decreasing. The small LDL was decreasing. His LDL medium was also decreasing. His HDL large improved. It got bigger. And the LDL size improved. So he did amazing. Well, exactly what we had hoped for with the rosuvastatin and lifestyle change. His liver on a statin, fine. Um, hypertension management, he really didn't want to start on a blood pressure medicine still. So we talked about alternatives. So L-citrulline which is a precursor of uh, nitric oxide. And uh, we start wanting to put him on that, really safe to use, uh, tastes a bit like citrus, a lot of biology brothers will use it. L-arginine is another uh, precursor of nitric oxide, and then niacin as well, another precursor of nitric oxide. Also, it will reduce triglycerides as well, which we're not really focused on. We're just using this for the vasodilation part of these um, supplements. But um, I said a calcium channel blocker might be in the next step for, for this person because you know, it's a vasodilator, um, first line management often for um, whites. And I talked about avoiding NSAIDs like ibuprofen because they'll increase the blood pressure. I said instead of that, if you have an ache, sprain, take a bit of turmeric, turmeric curcumin. So conclusions, uh, using the traditional lipid panel results in over-treating patients that do not need treatment and thus causing harm, and also under-treating patients with normal lipid panel and thus putting patients at risk for death from acute coronary syndrome. Nutrition plays a powerful role. A low-carbohydrate, high-fat diet and, uh, may be beneficial for some to help control glycemic variability and weight, but without monitoring an advanced lipid panel, the patient may be placing themselves at risk for acute coronary syndrome. Uh, especially if they have a family history of acute coronary syndrome, strokes, heart attacks. And statin therapy should not be based off of the standard lipid panel. We now have European guidelines and American guidelines supporting this. Um, so why we're still ordering standard lipid panels, probably insurance reasons. I don't think insurance is quite on board with paying for an advanced lipid fractionation. But if we're trying to save lives here, we're trying not to over-treat patients on statins and we're trying not to miss over half the patients admitted to hospitals in the U.S. who have heart attacks, because that's happening right now. We're missing patients who are having strokes and heart attacks with normal lipid panels. This should not be happening. We have the tests to screen for these patients. Let's start utilizing them. Let's start understanding uh, the lipid fractionation. Let's start understanding how inflammation plays a role in cardiovascular disease. I um, hope you guys enjoyed this lecture. Um, I might have follow-ups in this patient in the future, and if I do, I'll be posting about that. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed.